Hello everybody, this is Simon Lore, and welcome back to more Magic the Gathering lore. I want to continue to go over the stories of the clans found on Takir, and today I'd like to discuss the Mardu Horde. The Mardu were ultimately my clan of choice in the cons of Takir pre-release event, just pulling it out over the Absin houses. They are a quick and deadly clan, and my overall choice when it comes to drafting. So with that, let's begin. The Mardu Horde a name which strikes fear into the hearts of most who call Takir their home. They are a group of true warriors and conquerors, living their lives for the rush of battle. The Mardu live by a warrior's code, called Edicts of Elagra. This code is written down on ancient dragonhide parchment and named after the first Khan of the Horde. These codes dictate how each member of the Mardu should live their life. The code reads as followed. To conquer is to eat. A warrior earns by taking and fighting well. To rule is to bleed. Do not spend resources on those you have conquered, just take and move on. And victory or death. When you fight with the Mardu, you do so with full force and knowledge that you will either win or die. The Khan of the Mardu Horde is oftentimes viewed as a religious figure which demands respect. They command the Horde with absolute authority, but they are given legitimate respect. The Mardu Khan has always been a relentless and skillful warrior, with the Khanship trading hands as they fall in battle. It is common for the Mardu Khans to wear a bone of the previous Khan on their person as a sign of respect. The current leader of the Mardu Horde is a gigantic orc warrior named Zergo Helmsmasher. He commands the Mardu raiding parties from atop his throne found on the Mardu stronghold of Wingthrone. Wingthrone was built on a cliff's edge where a powerful thunder dragon had once died. Now Zergo uses the skull of that ancient dragon as his throne. Zergo became the Mardu Khan during a battle involving a number of different clans. This battle was huge in scale, but the Mardu Horde looked to be victorious under their then leader, Sarkon Vol. Sarkon Vol's leadership and skill in battle was unmatched, but at one point he was overwhelmed by the enemy forces. In an instant, Sarkon's planeswalker spark ignited and he began to unleash a torrent of dragon fire across the battlefield. This fire devastated everything in its path, even Sarkon's own Mardu warriors. The death toll was unimaginable. Zergo saw what Sarkon was doing and charged to his position to end the flames which were claiming his clansmen. But by the time Zergo reached Sarkon's position, he had already planeswalked from the battle. With the Mardu forces devastated and leaderless, defeat seemed inevitable. That's when Zergo jumped into the fray and rallied the Mardu forces. Behind his leadership, the Mardu found victory and proclaimed Zergo the new Khan of the Mardu Horde. Under Zergo's banner, a number of different races have joined the lightning assaults of the Mardu. This includes goblins, humans, orcs, and ogres. Many humans and orcs are drawn to the power of the Horde, seeking a warrior's life and oftentimes a warrior's death. In the life of the Mardu, they can find meaning in bloodlust and companionship in battle. The humans and orcs of the Mardu are champion horse riders and falcon trainers. Many humans of the Horde boast great cavalry and archery skills, allowing them to quickly approach their enemies while also picking them off from great distances. These races also train falcons to which they use for a number of different reasons. These trained birds are often used to spot enemy positions, aid in hunts, and even fight in battles. To this end, enormous rocks are trained as mounts and can fight in battles. The ogres of the Mardu possess a strength much greater than even the orcs, but their low intelligence makes them unpredictable. Many orc clans claim ogres as weapons of war, chaining them up until they're needed for a battle. Ogres are a vicious bunch, so the Mardu unleash them in order to incite chaos among the ranks of their enemies. The goblins of the Horde fight alongside the humans and orcs, but are mostly ignored. They are viewed as a side to the main dish, which is the Mardu Horde. The humans and orcs tolerate their presence because they are ferocious and hungry for battle, but are ignored because of their small stature and inability to ride mounts. Only one goblin among the Horde has achieved the status of warrior, and that is Yasemin Ankleshank. Often just referred to by her war name, Ankleshank is a strong warrior who is completely reckless in battle. She is famous for her rash battle expertise and fearlessness oftentimes taking to the field without the support of the rest of the Horde. She is also famous for her unorthodox fighting style, 
She never holds onto a single weapon for very long in battle. She will always switch her weapon with the weapon of her most recently killed enemy. The Mardu Horde values speed among all else. A quick battle means a less prepared enemy, which means more victories and more plunder. They fight under the dragon aspect of speed, which guides their forces across the plain fields of Takir. The Mardu also wield a banner in the shape of dragon wings, which again symbolizes their speed in battle. When the banner is rushed into battle, the wind lifts it up and gives it the appearance of flight. The Mardu align themselves with white, red, and black mana sources, with their strongest alignment being with red mana. This particular alignment of mana allows for the clan to be quick, deadly, but also honorable. The clan's theme of speed is showcased in its key mechanic, Raid. Raid emphasizes the constant attacking of its forces, allowing others to gain a benefit from recently fought battles. The Mardu Horde is a devastating force which can quickly and effectively pillage villages and fight opposing armies. Although they are strong conquerors, they are bad rulers, oftentimes leaving conquered lands to be taken by their enemies once again. But it is not ruling which guides this clan. They are ruled by the sword and the ever lustful scent of battle. So and there you have it, the lore of the Mardu Horde. Are you going to play as these quick, carnage-loving conquerors? Let me know in the comments below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.